1979 Ford F-250. This is my first beefy four-wheel drive I've ever owned. Bought it about, you know, you know about two. No, I've had it longer than that. I've had it about about seven years now. And uh, something really unique about this truck that most people don't know is this particular year and model of vehicle did not come equipped with a 460. This one by any chance, by some chance, just happens to have a 1969 Lincoln 460. Yeah, we're talking about the high horsepower model. Uh, book says 365. Um, I'm ranging between, I figure between 365 and 400 horses. Has a Dana 60 rear, uh, Dana 44 up front, has a four inch Skyjacker lift with, um, or excuse me, super uh, super lift, four inch lift, and Skyjacker components like the uh, dual steering ram up front to help stabilize the front end because it wobbled like a bitch after I got this all put on. The front end was just all over the place. Then uh, uh, Skyjacker shocks all the way around. Anyway, it wasn't running, or it was running just fine when I parked it last summer, or like, I think it was last August was the last time I ran it. And here the other day I tried to fire it up. Guess what, didn't run worth the crap. Well, back when I was growing up, or I should say when I first started driving back in the mid to late, uh, mid to late seventies, gasoline was like, I think it was 43 cents a gallon. But the nice thing about gasoline was you could uh, leave it in the vehicle for years and you'd get in and fire your vehicle. Well, actually, you'd have to let it run a little bit, and then it would fire right up, and the gasoline burn. Nowadays, there's so much additives in the crap, it goes bad in 90 days. So, I had a bad gas situation. Well, not to mention, I had another problem. Before I decided to start it up this last time, I decided to go ahead and replace the head gaskets, because when I parked it, I was having an overheating problem, and it was blowing hoses, uh, was heater hoses, upper radiator hose, and was blowing antifreeze out the the radiator cap all over the inside of the engine compartment. Couldn't figure out what in the heck was going wrong with this thing. Anyway, come to find out I had a blown head gasket and it wasn't getting into the oil, but it was blowing hot air into the water jacket. So the heads, head gaskets needed to be replaced. So we decided to go ahead and replace the head gaskets. Did everything according to the book, except the book left out one thing. This big 460, everything was done right. Okay, it's kind of in a disarray at the moment because I've been working on it. The problem was they forgot me to, they forgot to tell me to adjust the valves in a certain manner. I put it back together the way they told me to. Oh, forgot, new stealth intake. This also has an MSD, full-blown MSD electronic ignition in it now instead of the old point style ignition, but this actually had an electronic ignition in it and I just swapped it out for an MSD to make sure it was more reliable. Then I put a mechanical advanced distributor in here because I don't like relying on vacuum when the thing is going chugga 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 in first gear and in real low RPMs. So therefore you're not gonna have a whole lot of vacuum or your vacuum, anyway, you get the idea. Anyway, so in the process, I've gone through this motor, put March performance pulley set in it because someone did an engine swap on this and it was it had actually gone bad. Everything was bailing wired in here. I, I bought the truck off a farmer. So anyway, uh, I've got a lot, uh, between the price of the truck and what I've got into it with tires and the whole nine yards, and I actually have a rebuild kit for the training and the transfer case now, but I've got about eight grand into it all. But today we are going to be going in and doing the EOIC method of adjusting the valves because I have compression on all but three cylinders. Cylinders one, two, and three have no compression because the valves were not adjusted properly because the manual I was looking at didn't tell me to adjust the valves correctly. It just said, unbolt everything and put it back together the way you found it. And then torque everything down like this. So in the process, that caused all kinds of problems. So anyway, we are going to be doing that today. So I will be back in a moment after I pull the valve cover on the side. Okay, I'm back. Now, there's one problem with this picture. Any mechanic takes a look at this. Now, I'm used to building Mopars, 
And I don't ever recall having to go through this problem with Mopars, but when you pull these heads off, you got to pull all the rockers off because you can't get to all the head bolts because there's head bolts down between these rockers right here. So you got to pull the rockers off to get to the head bolts. Anyway, uh, if you notice something, there are jam nuts on top of the rocker nuts. Guess what? Those don't belong there. <laughs> Uh, not quite sure why someone put them there unless they thought the jam the regular nuts on top of there were loose or they wouldn't stay tight I don't I'm not quite sure we'll have to take care of that later on but I think if I do that what I'm gonna do is go to ARP which I've done with a lot of my hardware you like you'll see here this uh, these are all AR, ARP hardware it's stainless it's real high tensile strength that it holds it's designed for racing so I know in an automotive application like I'm using it, it they will last forever and you can retorque them several times without the threads stretching and wearing out, that kind of thing. So that's it's well worth the investment. But what I'll probably end up doing is I want to rebuild this motor and bore it and stroke it. And, I, and in that process, I'll be rebuilding the heads and massaging those. Men. But I'm not going to go over to a Super Cobra Jet head because the stock heads are C9VEs. These are high-performance heads from 1969. Um, so I will leave these somewhat stock as far as that goes when you put in things like aftermarket rockers and the rocker arm stud the these uh studs right here I'll, I'll replace all those and put all new stuff in them of course but in the meantime today i got to go through and do the eoic method of um adjusting the valves like i said because they're not adjusted correctly and also i'm going to see if i can take them damn jam nuts off of the top of there because that's just wrong it's not supposed to need those because the locking nuts that go on top don't require that so, here we go. I'll be back in a moment once we get things going here.